welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. This uh, little project started because I pulled uh, these two large 50-gallon uh, drums with a bunch of coral off of an old system. And I thought what I'd do is uh, show you how you can make yourself an ultra-low maintenance and also very low-tech uh, filtration system. And also what I wanted to do was to create a very stable environment in my uh, quarantine system so I can uh, test some LED lights for growing coral. So, as you can tell, these are all very dirty. Um, so what I'm going to do in this little project is clean it up. This is where I put all the corals in the middle tank. And it uh, <laughs> looks like the bottom of some river somewhere. Uh, this all needs to be cleaned. So what I'm going to do is uh, pump out all the old water. Uh, stir it all up, of course. And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, clean it all to, up. Uh, drain the original sump. And... Uh, clean up the barrels and then move all that coral into the barrel with the gravel and what we're going to do then is I get this all hooked up so it's all running together. Now the original system, uh, the top tank there is a 40 gallon tank, uh, the middle one's uh, 50 plus a bit and the sump is also 50 gallons so it was actually a really um, tidy little system to begin with. Uh, there's lots of coral in the sump and it maintained uh, quite nice for quarantining fish for years and years. So by adding these two 50 gallon drums, I have basically <laughs> going to have a 150 gallon sump for a 50 gallon tank. Well, actually a 40 gallon tank. Uh, I'm still going to do some quarantining, so uh, the middle tank, even though it's going to be empty for the first little bit, uh, once I start uh, getting fish and uh, stuff that I need to quarantine, it's going to be used for that as well. So. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be well, still 150 gallons of sump for a 40 gallon tank and then sometimes a 50 gallon tank so that's actually a lot of uh, a lot of redundancy for water and actually uh well, i won't give it any way but it's, uh, it's gonna work out quite well i suspect so what i need to do here is uh, rinse all the gravel that's in the bottom of that i mean it's it was ran for uh, i think it was about 14 years so <laughs> there's a lot of sediment in there uh you can rinse this stuff as long as you want it's never going to come clean but as you can see here, I got it uh, reasonably clean, and uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, fish out all this coral, rinse it all off, and you'll notice uh, a couple of pieces I will uh, set aside. Uh, all I'm doing really is, uh, I want to pull coral out of this, and uh, attach uh, things to grow to it, and, and every time I see a nice little piece, I'll just uh, make sure it's on top, that way I can pull it out without disturbing the, the whole filter. And here you go, I've uh, popped out a lot of the water, just moving the sand around and uh, trying to get the room as much dirt out as possible. Uh, and then they're going to do here is uh, use a shop vac. And shop vacs are very useful. Uh, I have a five gallon, it's a, quite a powerful uh, vacuum and I use it to, well, for, I don't actually use it for anything but uh, working on fish tanks so that way it's always reasonably clean or at least doesn't have any uh, metal pieces or anything uh, along those lines in it. So here we go, I'm gonna, oh yeah, <laughs> poor man scrub brusher, I'm just using the coral as an abrasive just to clean off the extra, uh, extra bits of dirt. Don't really recommend doing that for if you have a tank at home because you may scratch the glass of it, but this is just a, like I said, a quarantine system, so if it gets a bit scratched, I don't really care that much. And then this has to be done, I can't remember exactly how many times I've done it, I think I show two here, but I think I uh, move the sand around and then here you can see adding the water, rinsing it and draining it, I think about four or five times. Um, it really doesn't matter because you can't ever actually get it completely clean. And even if you could, you really don't want to uh, remove all the sediment because there's a lot of good bacteria in this uh, sand and it took me a number of years to get it all nice and established. And to remove it all would just be uh, pointless because you would have to reacclimate everything and get it all cycled again. And you'll notice during this process that I do very little, if any, um, uh, cleaning on the sump itself because uh, that's actually the very key. Uh, I think all I ever do here is uh, once I start filling it up, which will be uh, shortly, is uh, just as these things uh, flow through each other, there's going to be a bit of... Uh, here, it's filling up now. As these th uh, tanks fill through, uh, flow through each other, uh, it's going to collect in the sump and it's going to remove some of the excess uh, cloudy water. So the top tank's filling. You'll notice on the right-hand side there's a black pipe going up there. 
that's where the input for that tank is uh, once it's running and then that black pipe on the left is where it comes down and fills the middle tank and then again on the right in the middle tank you'll see a screen there and that's where it overflows down into the sump and then the pumps down there and it starts the whole cycle all over again so the top tanks filled now with uh, fresh water and now it's going to fill up the middle tank and as that overflows into uh, the sump I'll use the shop vac to uh, suck up any of the uh, extra, well, organic matter that is going to get stirred up once you, uh, once this water starts flowing through the system. Uh, when, when a system like this is running continuously, um, things get to a point where you'll end up with sediment, you know, uh, forming pockets and whatnot. But when you uh, do a major disruption like this in flow rates and whatnot, a lot of that will get stirred up and I just want to uh, suck out anything extra. Just as, because once I turn the pump back on, uh, all that material will just end up going through it and getting chopped up and it'll just end up clouding the water even more. And uh, I just don't want to create too much extra work. Because once this is all running again uh, and it's run for like a day or two and the salt's been back in it, uh, there's going to end up being a fair amount of uh, sediment forming on the surface of uh, the sand in the middle tank for sure. And I just don't want to end up uh, having to, you know, do too many gravel vacuums to get it uh, all flowing clean again. At this point, the uh, main tanks are up and running, and now I'm filling the barrels. Uh, you can see uh, this is a U-pipe. <laughs> Actually, this is the old U-pipe that was between the barrels and the old system. And I was going to suck the air out of it instead of using my mouth. I <laughs> just use the shop back to get that air. You can see the water dropping quite quickly in the right hand barrel that's just uh, the siphons form now and it just blasts out the last little bit of air and then uh, what we're going to do here is uh, hook up the, the water pump so we can have uh, the water flow between uh, the two barrels uh, this pump pumps at 1800 gallons of water an hour with very little head at all and a nice uh, one inch uh, hose so it's uh, going to have quite a bit of flow rate going through I don't think we're going to lose a whole lot um, through to any kind of restrictions or anything so we're going to hook that up, we're going to tie that to the U uh, section, we're going to fire that up, and then we're going to fill it up, and then we're going to add some salt. Uh, to start with, I'm only going to add uh, one 50 pound bag, which is well, obviously only half of what I require, uh, but it's enough to keep the bacteria happy, or happy ish, until everything's all flowing and then, uh, well, when it's all interconnected, then I'll have. Uh, uh, well, one water system, and I can test it for uh, how much salt I need to add to get it all up to, to uh, what it needs to be. There you go, you saw that hose lifted up. That's uh, quite a bit of pressure coming out of there. That's actually uh, really good. Everything's flowing, and <laughs> I know it all looks really dirty and mucky at the moment, but uh, before too long, it's all going to be running quite smoothly and it'll be clean. So, yeah, there's more cleaning I need to do. You can see uh, algae still in the glass there. That's because the old fluorescent system I had on top of this was, uh, well, it was getting past its prime. Uh, this, if you remember from my um, video on how to uh, quick fix uh, leaky filters, that was the uh, U-pipe I used for the canister filter. And I'm just going to use that to uh, drain water from uh, this system and down into uh, the two barrels. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to drill a hole and I'm going to use that to uh, for the overflow. Uh, you'll notice there's a, uh, two nuts and two washers and a bolt here just holding a piece of acrylic in place. Uh, that's just so I can uh, make myself a washer so that I can attach it to uh, attach the fittings to the overflow from uh, the barrel that's going to be on the left hand side. Uh, you obviously don't need to do this, you can just uh, uh, buy a different fitting, but the fitting I had, as you can see there, didn't have much of a flange on it. So I ended up uh, just machining this quickly just so I can uh, add it to the barrel without uh, having to worry about uh, getting an extra fitting. And I'm going to move over back to it and just going to slather it with uh, silicone like I always do. And then uh, just bolt it in place. There you go. And then just smooth that out. And then it's going to attach a uh, piece of uh, piping, a uh, flexible hose, and it'll just overflow into the sump. There you go. Nice and uh, it's neat. And <laughs> because most hose tends to have a bit of a curve to it, I just point the curve down towards the sump. And now it's uh, a little bit later, and I'm not sure if this is still the same. No, actually, I think this is the next day now. And I'm going to hook up the. Uh, the drain, this is going to drain from the top tank down into the sump, uh, sorry, down into the barrels and then through the barrels and into the sump. 
Uh, I originally had a larger restriction valve on this. Uh, well, so I'm gonna give you a tour here. Uh, that's, you can see where the water comes in from the right, flows across, and down through the three tanks. And then it comes, this is gonna come down through here, once I back off a little bit. And it's gonna go down and into this barrel. And then it's gonna flow over the other barrel and then through that hole you see there and into the tank. And there's that the original restriction valve, that was way too big, so I ended up uh, machining a much finer spray one. And I think the water's cleared up quite nicely here. And here I am, I'm gonna machine the very uh, fine hole so that we have a much finer uh, spray and a much flow, uh, slower flow rate. So the uh, intent here is when I do water changes, what I'll do is I'll just take the U-pipe out, move this part over into the main barrel with its hose, and then drain and uh, clean the right hand barrel, put fresh water in it, get it all flowing properly, and then gradually uh, reintroduce that at that low flow rate back into the main system so that way you don't shock anything at all. So there it is, that's sort of flowing nicely and it's going to uh, cause a little bit of extra water to uh, come into that, uh, into this sump and then that will overflow and then it drips down into the main tank. And that's basically how it all is going to run. Uh, this, I, I'm going to do another video on this as an update um, because I want to uh, show you how the coral works and everything and I'm going to obviously show you how all the LEDs work as well. That fluorescent system that's on there now is going to get scrapped um, but that's uh, all for a future video. And as you can see this is only like the next day so there's still sediment and all has to be cleaned out and then all this uh, algae that's in here has to be all scrubbed off. But anyway, I'll thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this style of video, just please like and subscribe. And as a little bit of a tease, what I'm going to do here at the end of this video is I'm going to uh, show you uh, some footage I recorded. Um, I think it's uh, about uh, two to three months from this time. And I've already got some lights on. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet because that's going to be for the, like I said, for another video. Uh, but I just wanted to show you um, how it all works and how it's all uh, going to end up looking. Um, just so, <laughs> well, I guess so you can watch the other videos, I guess. So here we go. This is uh, some coral. I'm just doing uh, as tests. And I will uh, fill you in on all the details in the upcoming videos. Thanks again for watching.